Oh, hi. Welcome back. We are back where we left off, underneath the DC-2, trying to get this tank off. This is it. It's gonna happen today. So let's do this. No surprise. No surprise there. Snap clean off. This part hooks into the chassis. That's why it's got that weird head on it. So really that just hooks in the chassis and then your nut attaches to this side. So that one broke. This one's gonna break too. It's just way too rusty. Just don't know what else we got attached at the moment. So you didn't miss anything. I just worked on getting the hoses from the fuel filter pipe down to the tank. Just a little bit of lube and some prying with the big screwdriver trying not to mess the hoses up. Got it to slip free. So the vent line is off and then the fill one is loose to where I think when I drop the tank it's just going to slide off hopefully. That strap's broken so the tank is loose. Once this side breaks here then I think the whole tank's going to come down. Everything on the inside is disconnected. We should be good to go to drop a tank. Yay! Alright, just gotta get that hose off up there then we'll be good to go. Now we're 100% free. There we go. Gas tank is out. So there, just to recap, that's what's in the bottom of the tank. So that's why the tank has come out. You can see on the screwdriver here, it's just all sorts of chunks. All, all down in there, I mean, it's just covered. That's just guaranteed fueling issues waiting to happen. Clogged filter, clogged fuel sock, starvation, whatever. Each Kawasonic Garage Infinity, he highlighted that on talking about 8.6s in that video, right, right there, maybe it's right there. If you have a steel tank, an old car, check your tank, switch your tank, get as fresh as one as you can. I don't know, that's probably the best advice ever. Get a fresh gas tank. With the old tank out, now I gotta do a little comparison. Old tank versus new tank and make sure we got what we need, it's gonna fit, and then get our shopping list figured out so we can order what we need, just in case. First impressions, not too bad. We went from that, yuck, to that, okay. Be careful if you are if you got a DC2 or a DC1, a two-door or whatever, this is a two-door gas tank. The lids, like that's your fuel pump lid and that's your sender for your fuel level. What I noticed when I was looking on Yahoo, there's two different versions of this. This is like a three bolt, bolt down style which is what mine has and I'm just hoping that means it's the same generation um, and then there's another style which I can't remember off the top of my head what it is I think it's like permanently mounted or something and anyway just a different design so just be careful of that don't think every DC chassis Integra or like DC1 DC2 Integra is the same uh, let's get into it and make sure everything looks good see what's in there for a fuel pump if we have anything make sure it's not rusty so it looks blah 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 I'm just gonna open the whole thing up and check it out Drum roll, here we go. Wow, that's shiny. That's so shiny. And it's got a fuel pump on it. That looks really shiny. Oh man, that is amazing. That's brand new. Look at that thing. Look how good that looks. Oh man, and I think the top seal Mine wasn't cracked out, but this thing looks really good. Oh, it is like brand new in there. This, oh man, this is really good. That like, I'm beyond stoked about this. Like, check this out. Look at that. That's fresh from Honda. Don't let that top surface rust fool you on the outside. Uh-uh. Look at that baby. Holy cow. Boom, I just gotta get the sender out. Hopefully that looks just as good. This is amazing. So pumped on this. Look at that. How good is that? That's, it's just so new. Unbelievable. The top is cracked out here. So that might have some like vapory smells that come out. Might try and see if there's a replacement gasket for that. Uh, mine is the same way except 10 times worse. Technically, the seal actually happens down here on the inner one. It's not cracked all the way through, but it would be the time to replace it. But good grief, what a win, man. 
We'll check, give it the old uh, like hand check on the top side because that's where like condensation can collect if there's like a half tank of fuel. So let's see how we did there. Oh geez. It's like just as, it's, <laughs> it's just as fresh and shiny feeling as the inside looks. So what a win. This is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna pull the fuel pump on my tank to compare the size of the pump because this being a DC one, it should have like, we'll say 100, 100 liter per hour to pump and that one might be like 150 or something like that. I'm probably just gonna get like a replacement Sard or Deech Works like 165 liter per hour and chuck that in there because that'll be enough for whatever any horsepower this thing's gonna make. Fuel pump comparison. Uh, they look the exact same size, new versus old. Obviously that is no indication of flow, but the sock is clean and the pump is crazy shiny. It looks so good. I'm just gonna chuck it in and get the car running. And then I can just, you know, easily with the back seat out, I can just switch the fuel pump when I want to. Um, not too far down the road. I just need to order it and such, but this is gonna get the car running and I'm not gonna take it to a circuit on this pump, but whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's just good enough to get it running. So what a huge score good bit of luck here i had to destroy this clamp on my old tank because it was so rusty coming off there's just it wasn't spinning so i'm gonna steal this one from the new tank and then that'll connect to the fill pipe so big win and i'm gonna reuse this guy too because it's way better i got the filler and the return breather hose off and just polished them up with some little spray and wiping them down looks to be in good enough shape to reuse so that's cool well, as much as I'd like to be throwing the new tank back in, I just, I don't know, I'm going to take the opportunity while I have this huge void now to kind of just clean up the surface rust, hit it with a wire wheel or something like that and get that cleaned up and then chassis black underneath here just to seal things up a little bit. I also need to track down a set of these hangers for the fuel tank, so I can't really put it in today anyway. But yeah, it's just way too good of an opportunity to clean it up back here as best as I can, so I'm just going to do that. I should probably just say the heck with it and move on, but I'm gonna test run my like kind of rust plan for the underside of the car on the new gas tank. Just cause there's a little bit of surface rust, it's never gonna come through in the life of the tank, but whatever. I got some JDM rust eater sprayed on, let it sit. You see how that does. And then chassis black, literally chassis black. It's just like a thick, a thick paint you've sprayed on the underside of your car covers up all the rust and then you can pass shock in with it. They also have rubberized undercoat and stuff like that, but I'm just gonna use chassis black to coat this thing just to give it like another, like I said, thick layer of paint to protect it and seal it up. The scotch Brite Red is way more aggressive than I thought. I don't think, I might just, I might just hit it with the chassis black cause this is gonna scrape into it more than it's gonna just take the light. I thought, I thought that was a lot less aggressive of a Scotch-Brite. I knew I knew reds are usually the tough ones and it felt tough, but man, that's going right through the little coating that's on there. So I'm just probably gonna wipe it down with some brake clean and a rag and then just chassis black. I don't wanna cause like more fresh scratches into it that are just gonna turn around and rust. So yeah, changing plans. On the underside of the rear, to make my life a little easier, I've got my, this is ultra cheap, and it came with this little wire brush. So we'll see, or the wire wheel, we'll see how that works, and then we might get a better one if it's, if it's doing well, but anyway, ultra cheap drill, ultra cheap wire brush. I'm just gonna try and knock off the heavy stuff all around here, because as you can see, it's, it's seen better days. This is, this is still solid, it just looks really bad, so that's what I'm trying to clean up. It looks really bad, but back to solid metal, so I'll rest convert that. 
clean up a little more if I can. Just keep working my way around the back here, knocking off the big heavy stuff. Flipped the tank over, got it warmed up, and going round two on it. The underside's pretty good. A few dents and dings, and like this scrape is probably from when like they removed it from the car or something. And then, like the worst ding was, I don't know. Yeah, like this little guy here, just a little doinker there too. So really not too bad, good shape. I got my helpers here. They're gonna try their hand at spray painting. Push down and then move quick, okay? So, like that. Let's just point away. Yep, yeah, a little closer, 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 closer. Hey, okay, okay, let up. Let, <laughs> let her rip, bud. Get, you get closer. Get me closer. All right, perfect, perfect. Whoa, okay, okay. All right, you guys did awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Woo, woo. Yay, 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 super painters. So I'm just working along, hitting all the kind of heavy high spots and with the the drill wire brush still. That thing's champ, $35 little drill and whatever free brushes. Just enough to knock it off and get it smooth again. That's the before test out there and that's kind of after. So got it down to metal to where I can rust convert that. There's this side, which wasn't quite as bad to start, but I've gone through and roughed all that up. And then comparing it to this side, this was way worse and this is a separate piece, but that's what I'm working with. So before and after. And then for the chassis leg, I got it all wired, wheeled, and knocked off all the big stuff. So as you can see, there's a bunch of little spots here and there that weren't kind of there before. But basically anywhere there was like a stain rust color, I just went at it. And once I knocked it back a little bit, sure enough, there's like a little bit of just surfacey, flaky rust underneath there. The saving grace is like, it still all seems structurally fine. It's just, I don't know, like seeping through the trunk floor or condensating from sitting so long or, or I don't know, but. So yeah, if you're looking to buy one of these old 90s cars from auction in Japan, like this is what you're probably gonna be dealing with a lot, but you're probably gonna have it all freshly chassis blacked to where you're not gonna be able to see it. And in the pictures of an auction, it's gonna look pretty darn sweet. So. I would guess this is more a reality than not. So yeah, while this looks really bad, like at least I kind of knew I was getting into a project. I didn't spend $25,000 on this thing only to find all this. Like be careful if you're buying something from auction because it's really easy just to cover up all that with some thick undercoat and send it to auction. Just a little buyer beware that it's not all honest in Japan, even though Japan is Japan. I think we'll wrap it up there for today, but I just want to take a minute to appreciate how straight this car is. Even with all the funk going on on the underside, I cannot get over, and what I really truly appreciate is how straight the body is. I love it. Starting today at the back of the car again, gonna work on the right side this time, cleaning up all the rust as I go, and then we're gonna explore the engine bay to make a list, another shopping list of what I need in there maintenance-wise, and so we can get that ordered and bought. It'll be my first time kind of really looking through any of the engine bay needs should be it should be interesting what we find hopefully it's in some sort of decent maintenance so on the right side it's more of the same i'll give you a little tour and the starting point of what we're cleaning up obviously that's yucky basically like all these seams i don't know what honda puts in there or didn't put in there or whatever but the spot welds are what are really commonly rusting around this thing this part here is not so great but it's just it's a lot of that stuff so unfortunate but whatever we're gonna do what we can and move on i really kind of have no problems with the condition of the car like anything can happen on track it's not a perfect car so if something breaks blows out whatever and i hit a wall like i'll be sad of course but at least it's not a cherry chassis that's going to the wrecker if it ends up getting written off so we're giving life to something that you know was just sitting so i'm good with it Less than ideal finding both sides. I didn't really notice this yesterday, but right here, this is the left side, right? Oh, I don't know, right in front of the rear wheel. You can see the, the jack is there. Anyway, this little spot is a big heavy flake right there. So we got some sort of heavier rust situation happening there along this body seam. Again, on the driver's side, on the right side, we got the same situation happening. Heavy rust right here. I don't know what it is about the seam, but all these seams back here are, are pretty bad like that. So that's unfortunate, but 
I don't have a good solution for it, so I'm just gonna act like it didn't. It's not there, and then move move on. Oh, an update on those special bolt hangers for the straps of the fuel tank. Good luck there. I had, well, I had zero luck online. I could not find the part. Went to my local Honda dealership and it was $7 for both the bolts, four nuts that it takes, and then the two washers it takes. Like, $7. Can't beat it. We'll be here in a couple days, so we get to move on and not have to stress about those weird things. I was trying to leave the exhaust on, but it's just kind of in the way, so I think I'm going to pull it off. The downside is... Every time you do that on these old cars, you're gonna snap something, so I don't expect any survivors for the hardware, which is kind of a bummer. But, the bigger bummer is, since we gotta pass shotgun, there's a hole right there. So I could go to the hardware store and get some like putty or aluminum tape type stuff and seal it up, but this is so paper thin feeling. Like you can feel where the seam is totally worn down that that hole is just gonna keep spreading and spreading like this is not long for this world so can't solve the problem now i just need to keep finding problems and moving forward well i got that off i guess with only one broken bolt so that's fine but today is just the day of good news. Looking up above the rear channel here. Ah, oh, look at that. What is that? Is that like RTV? You know it. This appears to be somebody's old doctoring job of covering up some rust to go through shotgun. As I was talking about, you just have to cover it up to make it look sealed up. So this, that's firm over there. This. That is soft right there. That's unfortunate. You can see, yeah, that's definitely, that's soft right there. Yay. So, I don't know. Like I said, address it as we go. Looking in the trunk of the car, it looks like the rust below correlates directly below this black taped off, like black duct taped off area. So someone just tried to cover it up years ago. Hmm, I'll pick at this later and then kind of get a game plan together from there. a little lube makes on your exhaust hanger bushing. Got it. Man, it's super windy, so hopefully I'm not getting too much wind noise. Sorry if there is, but muffler's off. Again, anybody, does anybody know who or what this is? There's no markings on it. There's no like Jasma stamp or whatever the weld quality you know like it's it's nice the design is nice it's stainless i mean it is stained a little bit stainless but yeah like it's it's gonna shine up good and it sounds that honestly sounded fine when it ran a little bit it did but looking down in there it's like a maybe an inch and a half maybe inside the resonator here which is probably why it was so quiet but for shotgun i'm still gonna chuck a silencer in there get that baby shined up there Woo! on the underside here i'm just kind of running out of time for today still want to look at the engine bay but yeah i just went through and did the same thing hit all the rusty spots some got down to bare metal like that and around this drain here i might need to take that out and just let air breathe or whatever but Basically around the whole perimeter of this hole, it just had rust underneath the undercoat. And so I just went back until I got to like shiny fresh metal, um, cause that's about all I could do. But now the muffler, the exhaust is out of the way. I'm gonna get the hangers and stuff cleaned up along this channel. We'll poke at this guy later. 
probably it's honestly in my best interest maybe just to do something really shady and like throw some putty over it some like bondo or whatever just knock this off throw some bondo over it <laughs> undercoat it and get it through shock in like that and then try to address it properly later up here it was the same thing just going along the seams and getting those all cleaned up um, just doing the best I can with what I got so yeah some of you are probably cringing like oh my gosh like yeah, you could do better than that and certainly could but like this is what I got this is what I'm working with I'm literally in a parking space you know I don't have anything special this <laughs> this here this gives you a good idea of my situation this is literally my tool box my literal tool box like i just keep buying stuff as i need it I'm not trying to go overboard you know stocking up a whole bunch of tools that i really don't need at the moment um, but it is time for a tool bag it's definitely a tool bag over a tool box if you put a bag in the back of your car it won't slide around it doesn't make all the same noise it just sits there pretty quietly tool bags are the way to go all right if you remember this beautiful engine bay let's see what we get into for need to order parts air filter situation i didn't expect it to be brand new but it certainly looks like it has not been changed in a while and then let's check the Radiator hoses look good. I mean, the clamps actually look really good. Hoses feel good, not crispy or brittle, so we'll leave it. If you're like me and somewhat of a noob and you're wondering if someone has a B18 for sale and you're wondering if it's a if it's a Type R motor, uh, if this hose is on the front side of the head, then this is like a GSR motor, so the or the SIRG or a GSR motor, not a Type R. If it's on the back side of the head, for whatever reason they switch that. It's a Type R motor. The intake manifold is different as well. This has secondary butterflies in it, and it's specific to like SIRGs or GSRs as far as I know. So a Type R intake manifold will not bolt onto a GSR, SIRG, B18, which is kind of a bummer because that thing's super ugly, but it's supposed to help with torque a little bit. I'm gonna swap the fuel filter for sure. I don't need to inspect anything there. It's just good measure. I wanna switch the fuel regulator just cause it's crusty and ugly, but whatever it should be fine hopefully um it's got fresh oil in it i need to check the spark plugs i'd like to do wires as well because who knows how old these are um but we might just see how it runs maybe a cap and rotor as well but again see how it runs <laughs> i need belts as well that dude i need a cap for it there and i'm gonna do the timing belt on it if it if it's running good when i start it i'm gonna do the timing belt refresh all that because i have no idea when that was done last and that's what the seller said like yeah maybe you should do that so timing belt water pump all that business for sure and then i think we'll be kind of up to snuff on things in the engine bay Coolant wise, it's nice and green, so I don't know if he just chucked in some stuff when I bought it. So yeah, it seems like fresh everything for the engine bay, um, kind of par for the course with this car. So yeah, I just want to get it running well, and then I'll do the stuff like the timing belt. I don't want to put money into that and then find out something else is wrong. So get it running, but we kind of know everything needs freshened up in there. So anyway, see you guys in the next one. Uh, much love, be well, peace.